was on Jesus when he died on the cross. How was he going to die? How was he going to die? Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. You have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus love on the cross. Welcome again to Jesus is Answer Ministry broadcast. I'm Pastor Rob Taylor. I'm telling y'all say, you know, you, you can't hear the word too much. And and, and when, when people are, are trying to, to get something new, you can produce itching ears and want to hear what you want to hear. Uh, but the scriptures uh, don't never change. And, and so we need to walk in the light that we do have. And then God automatically give us some more. We're teaching on the benefits of walking in love. Let's go back to 1 John 4, verse 7. We've been using this as a text. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us when God sent sent. His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Herein is love, verse 10. Not that we love God, but He loved us and sent His Son to be the perpetuation for our sins. Now let's go a little further today. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. One another. Now, now you see the order here. <clears throat> now you back up into 1 John 3, verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God. Uh, look at verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brother. This, this really, it, it, and, and it's only two ways that I've read in the scriptures that the Lord revealed to me. Two ways to know if you're really born again or not. You know, because uh, people can be born again and still have struggles and still have uh, addictions and things in the flesh and they really could be born again and they just don't have the, the knowledge yet of how to get the devil out of their life, how to put their flesh under, how to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But but here we see two ways. We pass from, the, from death unto life because we love the brethren. And so if you don't love the brethren, you ain't saved. Uh, you 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 you're not you haven't passed from death unto life. And the second thing is, there's a new voice speaking in you. When the Holy Spirit brings the love of God in you, you become a new creature. So that there's a new voice in you. And I remember when I first got saved, June 30th, 1988. The next day, I got kicked out of Samaritan Drug Treatment Center. And I remember, uh, you know, that night I went to church. Uh, with my grandmother, and, and I remember going out in the parking lot smoking uh, the Deacons, and, and then we're out there smoking tobacco, smoking pipes, smoking cigars. I'm telling y'all, it, it is horrible that these people have been lifted up in church. And um, and they can, they can use that lie, you know, everybody go see it. Why did Jesus give you a license to go and confess and prophesy and have deep faith in you going to keep sinning. I, the Jesus came to set you free from sin. He came to set you free and came to deliver you. And, and, and I've been free 20-some uh, years now and had not went back and don't even want to. And so uh, I remember... Uh, I smoked a cigarette that night. Jesus said to me, just like I'm talking to you, now you can't smoke no more. You got to give that to me too. And so I've never smoked sin. <laughs> and really, I didn't even repent for smoking that cigarette because in his eyes, I didn't sin. Well, well I scared you did. You smoked. No, I didn't know. I didn't know it was wrong. Once Jesus told me, if I'd have smoked from that day on, it'd have been sin. Sin is he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not. And so that's sin. And, and these people that teach you that you're already forgiven and you don't have to confess your sins, they wrong. 
You do have to confess your sins when you know Jesus don't want you to do this and you do it anyway. You have to confess and turn from that. You can't even walk with Jesus. You can't even walk in fellowship with him. And people have itching ears and these ministers got devils, the doctrines of devils, doctrines of devils. They're not the devil, but they have doctrines of devils that, 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 that say they don't have to confess they sin. they already been forgiven. Well, the whole world's been forgiven of everything except not believing on Jesus. And you can just go preach that to them then. And all the world has to accept Jesus. Well, then if you have to accept Jesus to receive forgiveness, then you have to confess your sins to receive forgiveness so you can walk in the light. There's no way you can keep on sinning and, 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 and I'd have kept on smoking and, and went around, oh, no, I'm walking with you. Oh, praise the Lord. I go to church. Oh, yeah, no, I don't do what he say. I don't do what he say. I, I just, I was, I'd go work out sometime. Young lady was there. They had some worldly music on. And I, I, I asked God, you know, to turn that off. And uh, I, I said, you, you, you like Michael Jackson? She said, oh, yeah, I love him. I said, well, I don't, I don't love his music. And, and, and she, I asked her, I said, are you a Christian? Oh, yeah. She said, but I'm not a street woman. Well, I did like my dog used to do. They turn, what do you mean? It's, it's a band, Gene. It ain't got nothing to do with no street. She said, no, I like him. I like all of them. I, and she was just, just and I said, well, well, Christians, we follow Jesus' teachings. And Jesus don't, don't allow us to listen to stuff like that. She said, oh, no, I'm not straight. I mean, now they're going to come up with liberal and conservative Christians. There's no such thing. It's Jesus, what he taught, said, and did. Those <laughs> who follow him walk in the light, don't walk in darkness. Hallelujah. And I'm telling y'all people, and, and it ain't her thinking. And I ain't, it ain't, it ain't judging her. This is what she's, what she's saying out of her mouth. Mother's of a heart of mouth spoke. And she had the right to tell Jesus what she wanted to live, what she wanted to like, what she felt like liking, and not what the master told her to live. I, 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 know, I know she's just religious. And, and, and somebody's probably trying to convince that girl that she's saved and she ain't. She don't love the brother. And, 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 uh, and she, she, she just, just kind of don't like me now because I, I don't like worldly music. And that's the persecution that those that live godly will suffer persecution. Well, we know we pass from death unto life because we love the brother. He that loveth not his brother batteth in death. You don't love your brother and you can smoke a cigarette in front of him. You, you, you don't love your brother and you can drink a beer. Love your brother, and, 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 and you you watch pornography. Yeah, I mean, you you might try to hide all that, but you gonna eventually have to tell somebody. Whoever hated this brother is a murderer, and you know no murder has eternal life about in him. Now, see, and so if this if this if you a murderer from your spirit, you don't have eternal life. Now, you could be a murderer from your head. I remember down in Tulsa, Oklahoma, I was preaching at a little Baptist church, and and uh, I was I just got through preaching. I was praying for people, and the Lord told me there was a lady there that, uh, that she had been in a relationship with this man in sin, and the man took all the money out of the bank, left her broke, left her hurt, left her struggling, and and uh, and I, I told her uh, two years ago this happened, and the Lord want me to pray for you. She came up there. I'm, I mean, I can't stand. And so when she said that, I, I went back to this person and said, oh, Lord, she's a murderer. She's got hate. She don't have no eternal life. Bad. I'll lead her to you. Get her born again. And Jesus said to me, no, she's my daughter. I, I, I said, no, 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 no. She's my daughter. I said, Lord, your word said that lady's a murderer. She's got hatred. The word hatred in the Greek is a persecuting spirit or active ill will with your words or conduct. And, and, and so 
uh, uh, she she got up there and, and and I was up there just being ignorant myself. Jesus trying to teach me, and and um uh, and so I finally said, what well, what well, well, Lord, how could she be hating this man and still be a child of God? And so Jesus told me, He said, tell about what happened. Oh yeah, I hate him. And so then Jesus told me, right up there in the prayer line, he said, point to a belly. So I pointed to a belly, and I said, uh, what's that down there saying? And she said, what's up down there scratching? Something down there telling me to stop that. I said, well, ma'am, that's eternal life. That's the love of God. See, her head. She had, she had that hatred in her head. She, she, she needed a man renewed. She needed to repent. And so I led her in repentance and, and got her to see how much Jesus loved her. And she forgave him. Uh, and she had back trouble. And all that disappeared when she forgave. Yeah. It is so much when you receive forgiveness and then live that forgiveness. Oh, their benefits. Their benefits, Satan. When you walk in Jesus' love. Jesus uh, told us here. Look, look right here. Whoever. See, she was hating from the head, not a spirit. You hate from the spirit, you're a murderer. And you don't have eternal life. When you hate from your head, you can repent and correct that. And, and get that off of you. Verse 16, 1 John 3. Hereby perceive we the love of God. You, 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 have you ever perceived the love of God in your life? Because he laid his life down for us. That's how you perceive the love of God. You never perceive the love of God from you loving your neighbor. You loving God. You perceive the love of God when you see how Jesus loved you. Laid his life down for us. We are to lay down our lives for the brethren. Amen. So, there are benefits, saints. There are benefits of Jesus being in control, dominating, and ruling your life. When you live, continue in his love. Uh, let's go to, to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion one of another. I'm sorry, verse, 1 Peter 3, verse 7. I was reading 8. Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And it's being heirs together the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. So I, Jesus told me back in 1991 that he, he gave me an option that he could bless me. And I, I, I started crying and that hurt me when he told me he couldn't bless me. And he said, one day you want to leave, the next day you want to stay. And um, <clears throat> he said, uh, you're going to have to make your mind up. I love you if you leave. I love you if you stay. And um, a, lot, a lot of people don't understand Jesus, but he was telling me that he wasn't going to quit loving me. And so I really needed to hear that. And, 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 and But I had to, 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 to make my mind up because when you are, are double-minded, you never get nothing from the Lord. See, that's why you see a lot of people struggle uh, in, in areas in their life because they'll they be talking about the Lord, oh, I'm trusting the Lord, and they, but they double man. They got something else in their mind. And, uh, <clears throat> and so so I, I, I told the Lord, you know, I didn't want to do nothing to hurt him. You know, you can come out of prison and kill nine people and the church clap and uh, everybody shouts, you know, because you've been forgiven through the blood of the Lamb. And then somebody get up and say, you all, you know, I uh, I, I got divorced years ago. And, but, uh, you know, I got saved and Jesus changed me. And, and I'm married now. Marriage is blessed. Children blessed. Home. And, oh, you've been divorced. But, but the murderer, you know, they, they shout about him. He's been forgiven. But then they, they, they don't think that Jesus will forgive somebody that's been divorced. And um, so I really didn't want to go through that. I saw man that they shoot. They they were just over me, robbing people, stealing, gambling, doing drugs, and drinking. 
and all very, uh, shoot, they, very people got so blessed from a testimony. Jesus set me free. But I didn't want no testimony. I've been divorced. I mean, like I saw how mean people was in the church toward that. And and um, and there, there is a difference when you really, really are truly uh, walking with the Lord, living in the Spirit, filled with the Holy Ghost, and 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 uh, you know uh, that, that 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 the Lord's called you in there forever, and then you know you you decide you you want to do something else. Amen. And so uh, the Lord knows. If you done married an unbeliever, uh, you know, he know. And we, we as God's people have to learn to live in these benefits. So I told the Lord Jesus, I said, Lord, I, I'm just going to trust you to fix it. So I made a decision that I was going to stay. I went home. Uh, my son was three years old. Uh, I waited till he was three. He wasn't three then. He was a year old then. And I sat him down and said, son, uh, your daddy is going to make a covenant with you. And here's the covenant. And I looked him in the eye and said, he will, I will never leave you. Ever. It won't never happen. You can just keep back, relax, and rest. Your daddy will always be with you until the end. And, and uh, you know, as he got grown, uh, he's, he's uh, graduating from college. Uh, a virgin and and, uh, and and been a part of a club and, and don't drink, don't, don't even hang around folks that do that. Uh, you know, I don't know why more, more young men are not virgins. They're not just girls. How about the men? Um, and he's waiting on his wife and then, then that'd be the only woman he ever date. Wonder where you want to date people from. When you can hear from God, know which one it's going to be and that's it. So why go through all that? And so a lot of people, when they don't have wisdom, you know, they got to try this person out. Well, I'm going to see if this is God. Well, no, if you can hear from God, you wouldn't have to see if that's God or not. Then he hurt you. Then this next one hurt you. And then the next one hurt you. And then you have to bring all that in your marriage. And it's, it really is a mess. And, and the divorce rate is so high because people don't, don't understand the benefits of walking in love. And so Jesus told me to read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7 through through. Uh, uh, well, I read 7 through 17 every day for eight and a half years, never missed. Now, I, I, I ran them over 10 years. And they in my spirit. And now I go back and read them periodically. Um, and, and, and here was the thing that Jesus uh, began to teach me. That the, he began to teach me the benefits of walking in love. One of the benefits was that you, you might not bless the person that you're walking in love toward, but you sure enough going to bless you. And, and, and he, he had to teach me. Oh, God, it took me several years to finally see how my faith worked perfect when I lived in his love. I remember, I remember, you know, I wanted to love my wife and uh, wanted to be a blessing to her. And so I, 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 I when she was, she was at work one day, I was home. I wasn't on the wall preaching. And uh, I said, I'm going to clean the house up, bless her. So I cleaned the living room, and I, I dusted, vacuumed, sprayed some carpet, freshened her down. I cleaned the kitchen. I cleaned the, the dining room. I cleaned the bathroom. I changed our bed, and I had everything. This is neat. The bathroom smelling good. She walked in the house. and just walked over. And I said, hey. Hey, hey, is you going to say anything about what I've done? She said, what? And she walked off. I said, well, that'll be the last time I do anything in this house. And I mean, I'm steaming and hot. If y'all ever been like that. <laughs> what? So I got on my knees because I used to pray at night all the time. Sometimes all night. All night. You pray all night. Oh, I can't do that. Well, no, you can't because you just spoke you can't. So we know you can't. But you can through Jesus. And and uh, I, 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 I got on my knees. And the Lord just spoke to me and said, who did you clean up for? I said, well, Lord, I cleaned up for her. 
show you appreciate nothing I do. Jesus said, you shouldn't have done it for her. You should have done it for me. I would have blessed you. I said, what? And he began to teach me that I need to do stuff unto him. See? You need to serve unto him. Because man ain't going to always recognize you. And you shouldn't even want him to. Uh, you should want your rewards to come from the Lord. He got the best one. And, 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 and I, 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 I come. So I waited a few weeks and and, and, and I, I, I just, uh, one day I said, Lord, I'm getting ready to clean up for you. And I sang and had praise music on and worshiped him. I mean, I, the glory of God was on my just got blessed. She came in the house. I didn't even want her to say nothing. I'd already been blessed by him. That's why a lot of people go to work and stuff. They're not blessed because they're not doing it under Jesus. They mad they at work. They complain and gripe because they're not living in the life of love. They're not doing it under Jesus. They're not, they're not being blessed by the Lord. I didn't even need to say, she came in comfortably. me. I didn't even need it. And many people always needing a massage, always needing a pat on the back. Come on, you need to tell me I'm great. Tell me I'm this and that because they're not doing it unto Jesus. And I, I believe in, <clears throat> you know, telling people, you know, they're doing a good job or something because I had to tell them when they ain't. But people should never need that. Even when you tell them. When people tell me, Pastor Kelly, I tell you, my life just so changed. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. See, I get blessed by, but 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 I, I don't need that to make me function. And, and, uh, and so I, I begin to learn that to live his love toward her, to live his love toward her. And I remember Jesus said it before a year and a half, uh, I finally called it where he didn't have to tell me no more. But I would go tell him, oh Lord, she, she, she did me wrong again. This is in the early 90s. She got delivered in 2001. She's been living victorious ever since. And she, 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 uh, uh, the Lord, the Lord would tell me, say, forgive her, forget it. Then, then I would say, my faith, Lord, I forgive her, forget it. Then if the thought comes, I said, no, I forgave and forgot that. Go, get out of here in Jesus' name. See, so I'm living by faith. I'm living in the benefits of his love. I have to fight to protect that love against thoughts. That exalt themselves against knowledge of God. Feelings that exalt themselves against knowledge of God. Emotions that exalt themselves against knowledge of God. How I think exalt itself against knowledge of God. I had to cast that down. That's my that's the action of my faith. And, 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 and I begin to learn that, that his love wasn't like man. His love wasn't like people. His love was how he loved me on the cross. I begin to live that toward my wife every day. Every day, never missed a day. I, I, I wouldn't stay frustrated at it. I didn't ever stay mad at it. Boy, did I have to fight thoughts like that. And I fought every one of them. And I blessed her, paid all the bills. Gave her money, bought her all her clothes. Paid everything. Why she liked that for years. And I grew and grew and matured and grew beyond even things I can even teach you all. And then just, I have benefits in my life today. Benefits that other believers have never had till they put this to practice. I know things by the Spirit that other people never will. If I teach you, you still ain't going to know it. Because these benefits only come through hearing and doing and living the love that Jesus loved me with. That never come no other way. And I learned <clears throat> that my prayers would be hindered if I kept up. So I never kept it. Jesus said, when you stand praying, forgive. 
If you have honor against any, even yourself. So your Father which is in heaven may forgive you. God has provided forgiveness through the blood, but it don't mean you're gonna walk in. You you can't you can't expect the blessing of Jesus to work in your life when you're not gonna put this to practice. I learned to live in love for my wife. I learned. I mean, I mean with joy. Joy. Hallelujah. That's the benefits. One of them benefits of walking in love. I want to make available to you this six CD series, The Benefits of Walking in Love. On the screen is our address for love gift of $30 or more. Make your checks and money orders payable to Jesus at that's the ministries. Post office box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. Saints, I'm telling you that, that this is the key to people having success, true success. You might get some money, you might get an inheritance, you might get this to work or that to work, but this here work every day in every time. And so order these today. Also, you can go online to robertscalesministries.org. <clears throat> you can go to our catalog, our bookstore, and you can order these. And if you order this six CD series, you can get a free copy of my new book, The Believer's Guide to Christ. And, and listen, saints, or you can order this by itself for $5. But we'll, I'll give you a free copy if you order this series. Uh, and I know that these will be a tremendous blessing to your life. Uh, <clears throat> there are a lot of more truths on here that I'm not even teaching on TV that 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 are really help you to really live in Jesus. This is the only way to really live in Jesus. It's believing how he loved you on that cross and living that love toward one another. That's everything else. Faith and peace and joy and strength and wisdom and righteousness, all that surrounds this love. Praise the Lord. Also, I want to invite <clears throat> you all that's been watching Jesus' answer church, a church that's alive. It's worth the drive. You know, you know, saying if you don't want to make the drive, then you know, you know, you ain't gonna come. But but we got a bunch of folks coming that are hungry for truth, <clears throat> and we know that if your life will never be saved, you come Thursday night, seven o'clock p.m. Sunday mornings, ten o'clock regular service, nine o'clock Sunday school. Look forward to seeing. You. I want to thank my friends and partners. Thank you so much for your financial support. Thank you for helping me uh, to get the gospel out. Saints, it's my friends, my partners. That is the only reason that I'm on TV. It's because of my friends and partners helping me. Not only praying, but supporting me financially. Thank you so much for being faithful in your giving. Well, my time is up. My prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes now and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus as the ministry, I'm Pastor Robert Schiff. Remember now how he loved you on the cross. Go live his commandment. Give his love freely as you freely receive. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.